Hey everyone, it's Reed. I know, I've been missing for a little while. It's been absolutely insane. And I'll tell you all about it. But for right now, I've got a real quick garden video we're gonna do. Now this here, I'm walking around here, is my keyhole garden. Now, oops, if you don't know what a keyhole garden is, well, it's a garden, it's got a little, it's round, circular, set up, we well, have got this like keyhole thing here in the center. And that's so you can access the center where we put compost and other stuff to feed it. Now this is the first one I built. And I discovered that a lot of things they tell you on YouTube that this is the answer for how things work and all that, don't really work. <laughs> so I had a lot of problems with this one and it took me a while to get things right. And there's still things I'm still fixing on it, but I'll have it mostly started out. Now, since I learned and actually have an idea of what the heck I'm doing, I can fix this and make the other ones work correctly. And I'll have to make a whole video about keyhole gardens. Now, Liberty Garden has some stuff about it that's good to watch about it too. Now, I want to show you something really particularly interesting. So, this is June. This stuff isn't very big, right? You know, it's like, Reed, how the heck are you going to get anything out of this? Well, trust me, very soon, this is going to look like an overgrown forest. You wouldn't believe how big things are going to get very quickly here. Once the beans start going and put nitrogen in the soil for me, everything takes off like crazy. And sometimes you add a little to help keep going. But like I said, you can't use miracle Grow. I mean, everything goes horrible with miracle Grow. I mean, not a bad choice for this soil. Now urea, on the other hand, that works. But anyways, let me show you something very interesting, really interesting at least. Okay, over here, we have a black bean plant. Yeah, black beans like you buy in the store in the bags that you want to eat and consume, or the ones in the cans. Real tasty, I love them, right? Let me show you something else. This right here, black beans. Whoa, look at the size difference between these. What the heck's going on, Reed? Well, plant it at the same time. So why is that one so much bigger? Well, that plant is a multi-generational plant localized to my area. Hmm? Exactly. They're selectively harvested and grown beans that produced the best and did the best. And these ones right there, well, they're very happy in this area now. They do pretty darn well. And what's up with this one? Well, these are not. <laughs> they are not localized to the area. Now, why would I plant ones not localized to the area? Well, it's because I started with a small set and I need additional genetics so I don't end up, you know, inbreeding things over and over again and, you know, things get real dumb. <laughs> I don't want my beans to turn dumb. <laughs> so we're going to have some fresh genetics in the mix for this year. Also means my crop will be a little less, but means the children of all these bean plants growing, well, they'll be stronger for it. So when you're planting stuff like that and trying to get stuff localized to your area, Putting in non-localized things, but you know, from diverse plants to help keep the genetics in really good shape is a really good plan. So that's a real quick garden update for you guys. And as when this turns into a giant forest, and I'll show you there, you can see it. Oh wait, let me go show you the sun chokes. One second when we get there. All right, this is sun choke forest, everyone. It's huge. These ones are doing outstanding. And then the ones I thought weren't going to come up, I was worried I got them in too late, did come up. Now these ones over here, which are growing like gangbusters, well, they're about three years in to getting used to the area. These ones are brand new. Hmm. Yeah, I think one group has really adapted well. And that's what's interesting. These are tubers, not really propagated by genetics, but they adapted and are doing really well. And I'm real curious to see if these ones start picking up the growth after they get really established and get going like these ones do. Now, my plan of getting things adapted to the area has not worked for potatoes. I have totally lost on that. But I was watching Liberty Garden and, and asked him some questions in the comments and he said, try this. And I'm going to try it. So I put a link to his channel in here if you haven't seen it. Go check it out. I like the guy quite a bit. I'm going to redo the entire soil on all my potatoes because I think I got it wrong doing some more research and with some tips there. But these really adapted to the area, which was kind of nice. So even though I'm not having new genetics going, the plants themselves got used to it. We'll see if this half does too. All right, take care everyone. This is the quick video for the moment. Bye.